Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, March 11th, 2022. Welcome to another eBay video. Today I'm going to be discussing a little bit more about how the post office lost my package and the situation it puts me in with eBay. I'm also going to talk about a crazy, crazy return. And I want to talk quite a bit about last night's eBay seller check-in. I know some of you guys were there because I saw you, but before we do any of that, let's talk about your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. Donna Montague wrote, Hi Joe, with the oh my god, something just sold! I'm just starting the video and something just sold! I'm not going to sing or dance. I have way too much to discuss. So let's get started with Donna Montague's comment. Hi, Joe. With regards to sending offers to watchers, I sent some offers out and one was accepted. I was about to send an invoice when I noticed that the buyer is overseas. My item was listed locally and offered only locally, so I have no idea why eBay allowed an overseas purchaser to accept my offer or to even receive the offer. When I have it in my settings that I don't offer items to addresses where I don't ship. Further, after canceling the transaction and blocking the buyer, I received a message from them asking why I canceled. I politely explain why. They're finding it difficult to accept that and have been hassling me on a daily basis for the past week asking me to ship the item. I have no idea why the option to stop a buyer from contacting you after blocking them does not work anymore. And it's shoddy of eBay to put me in the position of having to explain myself to the buyer. Well, Donna, first of all, two issues. You mentioned that it sucks that the buyer can still contact you after they block to, after you block them. To my knowledge, that feature has never worked since day one. I have the same problem as you. I have people that will maybe not pay me or send me a low ball offer or get hostile with me and I'll block them and that will stop them from buying, but it will not stop them from contacting me. Now eBay's excuse years ago was they would say, well, if you are involved in a transaction, if you have sold something to someone, you cannot block them from communicating with you. So in your case, even though you cancel the sale, it's recorded as a transaction. So eBay could jump in and say, well, that's why the messages are going through because you have an outstanding transaction with this buyer. However, that means nothing. If I contact you right now and I hassled you and you block me from purchasing, that would only stop me from purchasing from you. It would not stop me from contacting you. Trust me on this, all right? As far as how the person was able to buy your item, I honestly don't know. I'm guessing you don't ship through the global shipping program, right? I mean, if you did, all you'd have to do is ship the item to Kentucky and eBay would handle it from there. With all due respect, I would think about opting in to the Global Shipping Program. That is a wonderful, wonderful program for sellers. It doesn't hurt us a bit. It's quite expensive for the buyers, but I do very well with eBay's Global Shipping Program. The next comment is very long, even though I shortened it. It's from Marcin Biankowski. And he talks about a negative feedback. We rarely get a negative feedback, but this week we got five unfair negatives that eBay won't remove, even when we offer free returns and 30, yes, 30 returns, and most of them for wrong items sent. But the stupid people would make a note saying it doesn't fit my car. What does eBay do? Nothing, except charging us additional fees for item not as described cases. 
While I'm at it, the next story, it's crazy. We had a return request opened. Three weeks later, we get an automated message from eBay asking if the buyer shipped the item back. So you probably know how this works. We chose the option, no, ask us to step in and help item not ship back. And what does eBay do? They gave him even more time. Here is the exact message. Quote, we're letting the buyer return the item. Thanks for your patience. We know returns can be inconvenient, so please know we appreciate your understanding. We had a chance to review the buyer's return request and decided to ask them to return the item. For next steps, we'll track the buyer's return to you and then deduct the refund at its original shipping amount from your funds once it's delivered. If the buyer doesn't ship their return by March 22nd, we'll close their case and you won't have to pay for a refund." Unquote. What kind of return policy is that and what is it for? You said something about eBay giving buyers way too much time already. Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous. The stress they're putting on sellers is unbelievable, while buyers just having a good time and making a joke out of their cancellations and returns. All right, Marcin, let's start out with the first thing you said, and that's the fact that eBay will not remove unfair negatives even though you offer free returns. Now, I know for a fact that when eBay was touting sellers to offer free returns, they said they would back us up and remove all unwarranted feedback. And according to Marson, they're not doing it for him. Okay, Marson, let me see how to say this without coming off as a total prick. Give me a second. Why? Why the heck do you offer free returns? Jesus Christ, if I ever come across a high mileage piece of junk car, I'm going to contact you and try and sell it to you for top dollar. There is nothing to gain by offering free returns on eBay. Please, please rethink it, okay? Personally, I don't care what you do, all right? You can keep right on doing it. But like you said, they're buying the wrong size item. And they're claiming not as described. So you are on the hook for the shipping. Now, there's an old saying, Marson. I'm sure you've heard of it. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Guys, let's take a poll right now, informal poll. How many of you guys offer free returns? Do you see any benefit to it? All right, I do not. I have said this years ago and I'm saying it on freaking camera. I will never offer free returns, all right? I get way too many returns that are legitimate, honest buyers who buy the wrong size, like Marson said, they admit to it and they're more than happy to pay the return shipping back to me Plus, I don't have to give them the original shipping back. And I've got a great story about that, which I'll tell you when I'm done reading these comments. And Marson, also while I'm on the, on the subject here, eBay is giving buyers way too long to return items. I mean, it's just plain sick. And from what you're telling me here, it's getting worse. What's really rubbing salt in the wound is if let's say on January 1st, a buyer opens a return for whatever reason, okay? eBay gives them like three weeks to return it. So let's say they, they ship it back. They give them three weeks to actually print the shipping label, not to actually have it returned here. But let's say they ship it back on January 20th, for instance, all right? Now let's say you get the item back on the 25th. Do you know that within one hour, you're going to get text alerts on your phone saying you have to give the buyer back his money? I mean, come on. Fair is fair and right is right. Let's move on. Next comment is from 74 Bowtie. My thoughts on eBay showing our customers a cheaper item sold by another seller. I'm not sure why they would want to do this. They're getting a larger cut 
by selling the item for a higher price. So why they show them a cheaper priced item is beyond me. There, I totally agree with you, 74 Bowtie. And I asked an eBay representative years ago why they do it. And her exact words were, we want our buyers to have a pleasant shopping experience on the platform. Meaning it's a race to the bottom. And that's one race I don't want to win. The other day I needed to purchase a center cap for a local customer. Sometimes people come into my store and I don't have what they need. So I'll say to them, listen, I don't have it. If you're in a rush, you can get it on eBay. And they'll say something like, well, Joe, I'm not very good with computers. I don't, I don't know anything about it. Would you order it for me? And I'll say to them, well, yes, I will. But number one, I'm going to tack some money on. I'm not, I'm not working for free. I'm not running a goodwill mission. And number two is I want money ahead of time, at least a deposit. And you'd be surprised how many people say, no problem. Many of them will pay me the full amount ahead of time. So I needed to buy an alloy wheel center cap for this customer. So I did a search and let's just say there was 30 of them listed. I just scrolled down. I looked for one that was a reasonable price, clicked on it. There's the item. Good seller, no complaints. Now I haven't even purchased the item yet. I'm just looking at his item. But right under his item are other sellers with the same exact item. There had to be 10 of them. That is counterproductive. What they should do is put related items. For instance, and I've said this before, I was looking for the alloy wheel cap. They could have put tail lights for the same car, mirrors for the same car, airbags for the same car, not the exact same item. It's counter freaking productive. Nobody wins. That's what's causing cancellations because they're doing it after the item is sold as well. Last comment, Bill Still. I must report to you, I'm hearing quite a few ads for eBay Motors on a couple of our local radio stations. I live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Bill, I'm happy to report I'm hearing them as well in New York City. They time them strategically to come on right either just before or right after the stock market report. And I'm hearing them, I think, almost on a daily basis. So I'm very, very happy. eBay gets a thumbs up on this one. They're spending some of our budget money, putting it back onto the site, advertising for us. I think that's great. I give them high marks for that. All right, that's it for the comments. I don't want to read many today because I have way more important things to talk about. I want to try and cover as many as I can. First, an update on my lost package. I've been telling you for a while that I have a negative feedback because a buyer said it's taking too long for him to get the package. I can understand him being very upset, but it's not my fault because I shipped it out the very next day which the tracking reflects. eBay said they'll gladly remove it, but they can't remove it until the buyer actually gets the item. Do you know I shipped it out on February 22nd? Today is March 11th. I swear to Christ, he still doesn't have it. It went from here to Texas. The package is in Texas, but I got a canned message from the post office because I did a lost mail trace that says they're severely understaffed in the Dallas area and that I have to give them till March 22nd to deliver this package. A full month. It was a cheap first class item. And I know that even if the item never shows up, the post office is not going to reimburse me because it's a cheap first class shipment. Probably only cost me about $5 to ship. So I'm surprised the buyer has not opened an item not received case. That would have been the proper thing to do because then I could have proved that I actually sent the item out. eBay would step in, close the case in my favor, and I then probably give him a courtesy refund on their end. But I can't get this negative feedback removed until such time as this case 
is settled one way or the other. In the past, I've told you guys how it stymies me, how people will spend, let's just say, $20 shipping to get back $15. This week, I set a new world's record on getting a customer spending an exorbitant amount of money to ship an item back. Listen to this. The customer sent me a best offer a couple of weeks ago on a dog item. He offered me $35 and the shipping was $35 in a 17 by 17 by eight inch box. Okay, I accepted his offer. I was glad to get rid of the item. However, when I went to ship the item, don't you know this guy's operating out of a post office box? Oh, Christ, I hate, hate post office boxes because I can't use UPS to ship and it always costs me way more. And need I tell you, he was in Texas too. So I had planned on spending $35 with UPS, but because it's a post office box, it's going to cost me $44. I had no choice but to spend the exorbitant amount of money. And I did the math in my head. I'm going to make about $10 on this stupid deal. But I said, hey, a deal's a deal. I'm getting rid of the dog. I'm making room. And I got $10. Okay. So what do you think happens? He files for a return. Reason for return, just didn't like it. That's one I don't get very often. And you can go on to my feedback when you have a chance. He wrote this long paragraph about why he's returning the items because he knew they were damaged to start with and he thought he could restore them, but it's going to take him too much time and effort to restore them. But it was a positive feedback, so it's not a big deal. Now, think about this. He shipped the item back to me through the post office. Now, because I'm a commercial location, I don't think he had to pay the $44 that I did to his post office box. I think he probably spent only $35. So he spent $35 each way is $70 to get back $35. It doesn't end there. Here's what we are really going to break into a big smile. Just on a hunch, I decided to check his feedback that he left for others. Do you know he returned three items either this week or in the last two weeks? Similar situations to me where he wanted to use them for a certain purpose. He couldn't use them. He returned three items and left feedback accordingly where he says, I'm returning this item because, I mean, this guy is spending crazy money in shipping, and he's losing a lot. I mean, I'm not hating on the guy because he is honest. I'm just saying, if he did, if he was a little bit more diligent in his purchases, he wouldn't be losing so much money. I really don't know why he, he's doing this. In my 23-year career on eBay, I rarely returned anything. In fact, I can honestly say I don't think I've any, I haven't returned anything in over 10 years. And here you get a guy that does three in one week. Go figure. Crazy times, guys. All right, now I want to talk about last night's eBay seller check-in. If any of you guys attended the seller check-in, please comment and tell me what you thought of it. I saw a few of you guys there who I recognized, and I'll tell you how it went for those of you guys who weren't there. Approximately 1,100 people attended last night's seller check-in. It was pretty good and pretty interesting, and it was lively. They told us about some upcoming changes to the platform, how they're soon going to be allowing video in messages, 
that's going to be interesting. I don't think I'll be messaging anybody with video. Also, they talked about Also, they talked about changing the format for best offers where we will be able to require immediate payment if the buyer accepts our offer. However, that's going to be optional. You'll be allowed to opt out of that if you want. Now, while I'm on the topic about best offers, I talked about this last week, and I want to keep you guys in the loop as to how it's going for me. I still have best offers on all my listings. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm very happy the way things are going. Most of the buyers are sending me reasonable offers. Anything that's less than half of what I'm asking for automatically gets declined. So let's use $100 as an example. Most people are offering me anywhere from, let's say, $60 to $90, all right? Sometimes I accept the offer once I vet their account. They have to be vetted. I want to make sure it's a legit person who is a buyer on eBay and has been purchasing this year and doesn't leave crazy negative feedbacks for all his sellers. So that's why I'm doing pretty good. There are some people that sent me reasonable offers, but their accounts were sus and whew, decline. There was one guy who sent me an insulting offer and I just declined it. And then he came back and sent me the same offer again. So let's say he offered me $20 on a $100 item. I declined it. He then sent me the next day $20 offer again. Then I blocked him. Okay, but as far as deadbeat bidders, last week I think I had two out of approximately 30 best offers that actually went through. This week I had more. It's hard to give you an exact amount. I can tell you that as of this second right now, five people have not paid for their items this week. However, they could still pay because the longest unpaid item is three days and the shortest one is approximately six hours. So I don't know exactly how many are not going to pay, but the most it could be, I think will be five this week. And I had about at least 40 successful transactions. I'm satisfied with that. I know that sadly, even in 2022, deadbeat bidders are going to be a part of eBay. It shouldn't be, and there's no reason for it. But it doesn't upset me greatly because I just relist the items. What upsets me about it is during the four-day window that eBay gives people to pay. I mean, I don't understand why they need four days. During that four-day window, the item, for the most part, is off the shelf if it's a one-of-a-kind item. So that means it's not available for serious buyers to swoop in and buy. eBay should have some kind of protections where... The item stays available to the public until the buyer pays. I had a guy two nights ago make me an offer of $75 on a $110 item. I countered with $95. Then he recounted with $85. Okay, that ain't too bad. So I accepted his offer. I sent him an invoice. 40 seconds later, I get a message from him. I don't have any money right now, but if you're willing to wait, I'm expecting a refund from eBay for something I returned. So maybe I'll be able to pay you by the end of the week or the weekend. I couldn't make this up. This really happened to me. I honestly don't think he's going to pay, but yeah. That happened. But anyway, to get back to the seller check-in, for those of you who were there, on the right side of the screen is the chat window, and you can type in your comments, questions, and concerns. And if your fellow sellers will like your comment, they give you a thumbs up. All right? 
I'm not bragging, but I believe my comment was the highest rated comment of the chat. And my comment was this. I said, there should be protections for sellers when they receive negative feedback from buyers that say something to the effect, item is taking too long to get here, when it clearly shows we shipped the item in a prompt and efficient manner, just like what I'm going through right now. That received the most thumbs up of any comment during the night. So I want you to know, guys, I'm out there fighting for us. By and large, what I thought was the most interesting comment was written by John. John wrote a question in, and the question went something like this. Could you please tell us what effect negative feedback will have on our accounts with respect to defects and with respect to our items being available in search? Will this hurt us because I have received unwarranted negative feedback? That's an excellent question. So he wrote it into the chat and they addressed it at the very end of the presentation because they had some time left over. And they said, we're going to answer some questions live on the air. So one of the eBay, excuse me, one of the eBay representatives read John's question live, just like I said it now. And she was about to answer the question live on the air and something happened. I believe somebody contacted her either through a pop-up instant message or through some other means because she became flustered. You could see it. And she said like, oh, oh, okay, I'm going to send this question off to the team and I'm going to let them handle it. She was all ready to answer that question but she received a communication from someone in some mannerism that said basically, do not answer that question. That is my belief. Any of you guys who saw the presentation last night, I'd like you to expound on that. Did you notice it? We talked about it last night in the Facebook groups and people did notice it. And I was a bit chagrined that they just couldn't come out and say, you know, what the policy is or what effect it's going to have on the account because most people, most sellers will agree that the climate is such that buyers are leaving more unwarranted negative feedback than ever before. I've said it. Most of you guys agree. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. I'm going on and on here. I think I better bring this video to a close. Guys, I'm Crazy New York Driver, and you're not. Thank you for watching this video. Every Friday night, I come out here and I make these videos to try and help you stay successful as an eBay seller. If you think I'm doing a good job, please leave me a thumbs up. It tells me I'm on point and appreciated. If you don't think I did a good job, tell me in the comment section what you want me to hit up and I'll be more than happy to do so. Guys, I hope each and every one of you make a ton of money on eBay this week. I had an excellent week on eBay sales wise, but guess what? Sunday was freaking dead. So dead that I started to panic. I ran a sale. I reset my store and I even sent offers to watchers. Got, I got nothing of that. But my point is that Sunday was Freaking awful. Guess what Monday was? Monday was one of those days you only dream about, where your iPhone just keeps ka-chinging, ka-ching, ka-ching. Well, that's what Monday was. Monday was great, and the rest of the week was great, too. But Sunday was god-awful. How did you do? Why don't you tell us in the comment section below? Anyhow, I got a guy. I kept you guys too long. Thanks for watching. Rock on and peace!